It was the 40th day anniversary of Nida Al-Sultan's death, who had been shot in 2009. I went with my mother, and we got there at 7 a.m., and there were a lot of people. We just found ourselves in the middle of this giant protest held on top of open graves. And there were so many open graves and there were so many walking on them. There were just people everywhere. <laughs> It was just basically more than I could compute and more that, than I could comprehend. I was sitting behind these two people and I just started making more videos and doing more art and I just kind of like dealt with it that way. I moved here in 1995. LA and Tehran are both home and they both kind of feel the same. I was born right between the Iran-Iraq war, but I had an amazing childhood because I had such a great family base. I was raised by my grandmother and my aunt and my mom and my grandmother used to like help us how to make like bread and sew and so it was amazing. There's such a misunderstanding about Iran, and what's so important about Light and Shadows, this exhibition, and Marjan's work, and all these Iranian artists, is that it really does show that Iran is not this just one homogenous place, that people do have different perspectives. There are 80 million people who live in Iran. About 70% of the population is under the age of 35. A lot of them do not agree with the Iranian government. A lot of them have different perspectives, as we saw with the 2009 Green Revolution. Unfortunately, their voices are censored, but people have the internet, they have YouTube, and slowly, slowly, we're beginning to see what they really think and how they begin to express themselves. August 5th, 2009, which was the day we got arrested. At night, I just figured, Let's go out, let's go for a drive, let's try to make it to Tajish by sunset. We hadn't even begun to go around Benek. And I remember looking up and looking out the window and there almost wasn't any Benek. There was just policing uniforms, military uniforms. <laughs> I was taken into this trailer. A bunch of paperwork were put in front of me and I was getting yelled at. The guy who originally like got us kept coming into the trailer, kicking this door that was this like flimsy. It's kind of, that's why I picked the material that I print the works on because it reminds me of that, like cheap vinyl, but like heavy non-door door. door. <laughs> like he kept cut, kicking that down, coming in and going, give them to me, I found them, they're mine. I did a lot of sitting in closets after I got arrested, so all of the crates kind of look like the inside of my closet. Mark John by bringing framed photographs that are on canvas and put over these beautiful crates are from Iranian historical sites where Marjan is very passionate about. She basically sits inside these crates and um, tantalizes the audience by touching the background. As you can see, people get intrigued and curious. Each crate is like a filing cabinet for the happenings of a certain day. Audio that was pulled from video, Sounds, dirt, stuff, pillows, light, and I go and I sit inside them 
and they all have different ceilings in them. And I kidnap people into each crate and I do different performances based on the crate. One of the ideas that I would like to create in the gallery is bring a more understanding of different communities and uh, backgrounds within Iran or Israel that lived and lived together for years and there has been lack of connection and understanding between them. And this is a great way to get to understand the culture and the history and the beauty of what we, we can bring into Los Angeles. Know what they're talking about, you know, because we're so rich with history and we have so much to offer. You met me, you're doing that right over here. You're using these tools, these God given tools, to inform the world of something deeper. I think my art's just like my therapy that I drag other people through. And I spent so much time trying not to make art about these four days that they just became so heavy that I needed to put them in giant empty shipping crates that look empty to other people. But I just had to make art about it. I just had to make art about it and get over it. And honestly, like, I'm over it.